everybody. Rev here. I'm the host and GM of The Crit Show, an actual play podcast where we play Monster of the Week. But we are here this week for a different reason. We are here to preview the Codex of Worlds. But before we get into that, allow me to introduce my fellow players. Who else do we have around the table? Hi, I'm Eli. I use they, them pronouns. I am the MC of Siren Song, an all black monster of the week TTRPG stream. You can find me everywhere on the internet as Reliable Elliot. I'm AJ, also known as Husha Kid. You can find me on the three T's of social media it's Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok as Husha underscore kid. I'm a video editor, TTRPG performer, and stream technician. Hi, I'm Sophie Lagasse. I work for Evil Hat Production. Uh, but I handle the digital. Uh, work like this Roll20 uh, platform and uh, drive through each, you know, everything we publish digitally uh, or for VTT. Hi, I'm Michael Sands. I'm the creator of Monster of the Week and I'm the author of Half of the Codex of Worlds. Marek Galonka, whose name you might recognize from the Tome of Mysteries, uh, contributed the other half. And what we're here for today is to preview something new from it. Um, now, the book's got two sides to it. Um, one is a series of team playbooks, which are a kind of group playbook for your hunter team that gives them some special abilities and new story ideas. And the other half is completely new settings for your Monster of the Week game. And it's one of those we're going to be having a look at today, which is called The Strange Old House, in which your group of Monster of the Week hunters... Um, Inherit a weird, creepy house with all kinds of bad things happening in it, and we'll use that as the kind of uh, central guide of what the mysteries are about as we play. So we're going to take a little bit of a preview of that, create a weird, creepy house, and do a couple of mysteries to show you what sort of things come out of it. All right, so what is the first step in creating our creepy old house? If you head over to the Roll20 thing, you should be able to see... There's a big list of questions about the house there. We're going to go through as a group and answer and figure out what sort of house it is. Okay, so uh, the very first one is who does the house belong to? The suggestions are all of you own it in common. One of you is the owner. Um, who is that and what will prevent the rest of you from leaving the place? Um, some of the home hunters own it together, um, perhaps as members of a family or an organization. Um, so then you'd decide which of you are part of that group. An organization, perhaps a professional's agency or an initiate sect, owns the house and has put you in charge of it. Um, so then you'd ask, how did the organization come to own this? Or you can come up with another option of your own. So question, should we make our hunters first and then we can build the house? Or I think for this one, let's let's figure out what the house is like and, and use that to inspire what the hunters will be like. Although if you've got an idea, I think that's cool. I mean, it could kind of be a bit of a back and forward even. I was thinking of uh, creating an initiate, so that might be a connection to the house. So perhaps like an organization is yeah. the, the group who owns it. And for whatever reason, this group of hunters are in charge of taking care of it. Okay, so house is owned by a sect or something that has put you in charge. Well, the next question is, how did the house come to you? Was it bequeathed by an ancestor who died recently? Bequeathed by an ancestor who died a long time ago? In which case, has the house been abandoned? Uh, was it bequeathed by a mysterious stranger? Uh, the news delivered by a lawyer who never met their client? It could be that the current owner has gone missing. It could have been gifted to you by a living relative who can't stay there any longer. Are they retiring to somewhere nicer? Are they burnt out? Or are they in some kind of trouble? Or perhaps you've been given the house with a duty to deal with the secrets it hides. Who gave it to you in that case? Perhaps you bought it. Why did you purchase this house? And again, you can come up with your own option if none of those appeal. I was thinking that it was given to us as the organization, but it was like given by like a mysterious benefactor. Oh, so that's how the organization got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a mysterious stranger. Well, we could leave that pretty open. So you you heard there's some dodgy story about how the uh, house came into possession, but you don't know the full details of who it was mm -hmm. behind it. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And now's where we start getting into the ones that um, 
might inform or work with like what hunter concept you want is that why must you particularly go and live there uh first options i've lost everything and have no choice but to live here i was trapped in a bad situation and this is a way out i always wanted to uncover the house's secrets it's my duty to protect the world from what's in the house i don't really know why i have to live here but i'm compelled to i don't fit into the world outside but i belong here in the house uh, or, I promised I wouldn't return, but now I realise that I couldn't really get, ever get away. Or, again, come up with your own option. I was thinking that the, the last assignment, or maybe more than one assignment, went south. This is not quite a punishment, but, you know... We, uh, it, it might turn into it. <laughs> it could turn into it, and it's it's probably the, the point of no return. Sure, that sounds good. Um, so, I was considering the divine playbook and uh think it might be interesting if it was i was trapped in a bad situation and this is a way to escape Mm -hmm. oh like you can't be found there for some reason or something like that Mm -hmm. yeah cool i was thinking i don't really know i just have the compulsion um because i was thinking about the mundane playbook and that i am the groundskeeper and that i've just stayed through multiple owners and i I want to quit, but I, I, for some reason I can't. I keep showing up to work. Yep. I was thinking of playing the summoned. I think it, 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 it's a whole situation of like being summoned to destroy the world and it's just like, <laughs> nah, this is too interesting. I joined the organization. The organization was just kind of like, you need to deal with this house. Uh, so is your association with the sect pretty much the um, like the Hellboy and the BPRD? You're like, uh, I'm supposed to destroy the world, but actually I like it, so I'm protecting it instead kind of thing. Yeah. Sounds good. Now we uh, decide what the house is like. Um, so this one's much more a list of inspirations than specific options. Um, so take these ideas, take your own ideas. So, uh, and pick two to four of them. Is the house run down? Is it grand with light and airy galleries? Is it sprawling, isolated, surrounded by primeval woods, a mixture of age and styles? Is it ancient? Is it filled with tiny cramped rooms and twisty corridors? Is it packed with old books and artifacts? Is it set in an enormous overgrown garden? Does it overlook the sea? Are there loyal servants who live there? Is it near a prehistoric monument? Is it haunted? Is it a townhouse in a city centre? Was it built just a few decades ago? Are there rooms that don't quite seem to fit when you look from certain angles? Uh, Are there other things that you think you'd like to throw into the mix of what this house is like? I think uh, a mixture of ages and styles is a very cool thing, sort of depending on where you are in the house. It seems like a whole different interior designer decided to take a stab at it. I would like it to be overlooking the sea. I might contribute one myself. I'm going to put in the absolutely haunted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, grand with light and airy galleries. Okay. What do we think looking at this house on the, you know, overlooking the sea? Is it surrounded by primeval woods or does it have a bunch of overflowing gardens? I feel like something looking out over the sea will go with gardens. That seems more kind of scenic. Okay. So where in the world is this house? I honestly like Maine because Maine is very unassuming, so I feel like it fits very well. Yeah, if there's any creepy thing that would happen, it would happen in Maine. Because that's where a lot of Stephen King's stuff was set, right? That sort of area. Yeah. Cool. Um, Okay, then think about how does it fit into communities nearby and what are your nearby neighbors and towns? I was thinking it might have been one of those late 19th century spas for the rich, like the one the founder of Kellogg had or the central, uh, the, the sutro baths in San Francisco. That would explain why it's light and airy. And as far as the locals know, it's just this decrepit old spa. And I, I feel like um, given that we know it's a mixture of ages and styles, it might have been something else before then too. Mm. Um, or there might be parts of the house that were pre-existing yeah so that probably suggests to me that it's probably not too close to any other large towns it'd be a bit isolated but probably not too far either yeah so like a little way out of the nearest town yeah Mm -hmm. and probably not too many neighbors either i guess because they'd want it to be quite a bit remote and quiet it's definitely their urban legend 
of the town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, next up, what secret does the house have? Uh, again, this is an answer as a group one. It's your choice whether or not you know or how much you know about the secret when the game begins. So suggestions, an evil being is imprisoned here. Or an evil being was released by something that happened here. Um, Perhaps the house provides access to a magical other world that contains horrors and perhaps wonders. The owners of the house gain power, but in some it becomes twisted and corrupt. Perhaps something in the house calls evil to itself. Or perhaps the house itself is evil. I like the idea that you mentioned about it probably being something else before it was the spa, and that maybe we don't exactly know what that is, and that's part of the understand the house mystery. Yeah. Be like something imprisoned there, or that like a lot of bad or negative energy things happened there before it was the spa or something. Yeah, those both good options. So something bad happened there. Cool. And I've put uh, maybe there's something imprisoned there with a question mark too, because I kind of like that. Okay, and then uh, what sort of monsters does the house attract to it? Ghosts and the dead, ancient gods and their servants and worshippers, demons and infernal creatures, things from beyond, uh, spirits of nature or elements, shapeshifters, creatures from myth and legend, entities of pure magic, transformed people, sorcerers and others seeking power, perhaps refugees from other worlds or mystical places. I feel like with a divine and a summon that does suggest like something like demons and infernal creatures or ancient mm-hmm. gods from that yeah. list. I honestly like both of those. Um, I think especially with it being like, I think we said like old bathhouse type deal. Yeah. Leaning into that with the ancient gods and servants and worshippers, I feel like connects very well. That feels like it might suggest ghosts and the dead as associated with that as well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm maybe sorcerers and others seeking power yeah so i've definitely got a pretty good picture of that house for myself now i hope you all have too last thing what's it called and this is divided into does it have an official name like that it's on the map as and do you have your own name or nickname for it the elysium and something pompous (laughs) yeah I quite like Elysium. Or the something Elysium, if you want to make it. Oh, even more pompous. More more (laughs) grandiose, yeah. Like golden, the golden Elysium. Yeah. Okay, and do you have a nickname for it? What would Rev's character call it? (laughs) Just work. (laughs) The locals just call it, like, the spa or something like that. It's just something real simple. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Like I say, I feel like I've got a very good idea what's going on with this house now and what sort of secrets might be found within it. And in the roll 20, you see in the background, I've got a little schematic of the different bits of the house. So one of the things that happens in this is every time you do a mystery about the house, you'll be able to explore a little bit more and uncover one of these secret rooms, which all have different effects. Normally, it would be two mysteries you'd have to do before you unlocked one. But I thought in this, we'll play a mystery today and then you can find one of the secret rooms after that we'll explore it you'll find out what is in there and uh take advantage of that for the second mystery next week um so at the moment you just know about the regular living rooms of the house the places you know all the normal bits and pieces and all the other stuff is secret hidden by whatever means uh so next step then character creation i don't know if you're already ahead of me and have started on that I'm playing Onyx. They use any and all pronouns. They are the Divine Playbook. His moves are Angel Wings, What I Need When I Need It, and Cast Out Evil. And her gear is Divine Armor with a look suited to your Divine Origin, uh, and then a Thunder Hammer. I am the Summoned. Uh, My character's name is EK. Uh, Their pronouns are they, them. The moves I have chosen is freakish. I have, uh, should I feel that? Which my body has two armor. This does not stack with any other armor. And why so serious? Which gives me an excuse to have one-liners. The gear that EK has is a super hand cannon and, and also a sledgehammer and a big axe. I am playing Liam. He is the mundane. My moves are panic button. Uh, When you need to escape, name the route. You'll try and roll plus sharp. Uh, On a 10 plus, I get out of danger. Uh, On a fail, 
uh, things don't don't go that way. Uh, the power of heart. Uh, when fighting a monster, if I can help someone, I don't roll cool. I just automatically help as if I had rolled a 10. And uh, don't worry, I'll check it out whenever you go off by yourself to check out somewhere or something scary mark experience. And my gear is a hunting rifle and a fire axe. Uh, the hunting rifle for the vermin that get into uh, the gardens. Um, and unfortunately, the fire axe because the growth is just kind of uncontrollable. And then my means of transport is a classic car in terrible condition. I should ask, add uh, about the traditions of the, the sect or the agency. Uh, I got two good traditions. I picked knowledgeable and nifty gadgets. And the bad tradition I picked is factionalized. So I figured there's a lot of politicking. Which means that we get probably contradictory information whenever we ask for for something. Uh, and my moves are when you are in good standing with your sect at the beginning of each mystery, roll plus charm, which is, I believe, a zero for me. Ancient fighting arts, uh, which lets me do uh, damage with uh, melee weapons. Uh, mystic, I am good with using magic. And that old black magic that lets me use in, uh, some questions from Investigate a Mystery when I use magic. Uh, because of those traditions uh, uh, or those moves, I have uh, uh, a lot of uh, weapon equipment. Probably more than I see my character using. Big sword, silver knife, crossbow, 9mm sniper rifle. So Eli, you're divine. What are you thinking is the like divine side that they've got contact with. Where are you drawing from there? The mission I chose is you've been exiled. Uh, you must work for the cause of good without drawing attention to your brothers and sisters as they're bound to execute you for your crimes. I think Onyx still doesn't know exactly what god they're connected to or whatever. I think it's because their memory was wiped, though, because of something they did. Okay, so they know they've been thrown out, but that's about it. Yeah, I think that's part of why they're at the house is like they need to hide, but they also are not sure what exactly they did. And it's it's kind of a confusing thing for them. But he knows that he needs to try to fix it or either fix it or hide permanently from these other people who definitely want him dead. Uh, AJ, how about your summoned? Well, they are going by the name EK, but their demon name is Ekra Felsum. They're not red and they're blue definitely got uh four arms but like the top two arms are bigger than the lower two arms so they're like more like sub arms got more of a uh, ram's horn just kind of like starting from the eyebrow and going uh swirling on the sides so that brings up a question like how weird is it to see someone this overtly supernatural in this world is it pretty much like the normal world except for you or might people have seen another creature like this like i'm just trying to get is is like the supernatural a bit more well known in this in this world i think it may ha be a little known for the supernatural just because like it, like i was summoned with the intention of destroying the world so so people will have heard of you mm -hmm. like were you on talk shows and things like that or um or was it just like rumors and urban legends? I think uh, EK was on one talk show <laughs> before the uh, organization scooped them up. Yeah, no, that, that sounds good. Okay, so would people have heard of any other supernatural creatures openly being about? Like, is it just you or might there be a handful of others that people have heard of? There's probably like a couple, but those are more urban legends. They're not... They're not as... They weren't on TV. They're not as sociable <laughs> as me. <laughs> uh, Sophie, I'd like to know what what went wrong on your last mission that got you sent here. I made some very specific calls about what kind of creature we were going against. And... You were not correct. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. And I think several agents were severely harmed or maybe uh, even killed. Uh, in that case, are we ready to do history? Yeah. Okay, so aside from the history on your playbooks, you can also choose from one of the connection options for the house, which uh, uh, the first two apply to all the hunters. 
Uh, the first one is you're all family. You could be siblings, cousins, parents, children, aunts and uncles, other distant relations. So you'd note your relationship to everyone else. Uh, or you were all complicit in a tragic incident. You don't really talk about it, but you've never got over the guilt about what happened. Did someone lose their life? Was it your fault? Um, and there's uh, some more normal history options that just go between any two hunters. The first of those is the two of us were chosen to be stewards of important knowledge about the house. What secret are we keeping? Um, and you'll decide the two of you and let us all know what that secret is. Or the two of us discovered one of the secret rooms in the house when we were younger. Pick one of the secret rooms from the house map. Decide what happened to the two of you there. Mark that room is available. You know how to find it again. And you can explore from there as well as from the starting rooms. But one of you must spend a luck point due to those previous events. And the last one. Two of us lived in the house as children. We had to run away. What was so terrible your family had to leave? Yeah, I think I could take one of those. The two of us were chosen to be stewards of important knowledge about the house. Uh, what secret are we keeping? Decide between the two of you. Uh, let the group know what it is, especially the keeper. Like, I feel like this might be information that I know with Chloe if she is the one who is given kind of the, the task of looking over the house. And it seems like Onyx and EK are are kind of her team. Uh, is Onyx on the team, or are you just... Oh, of the house? Actually, I think I'm just at the house. Now okay. I think about it. Yeah. I think Onyx is probably someone that you've seen multiple times. Oh, uh, yeah. So you're not yeah. officially living there, but you are living there, mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that secret might be, I have a map of the grounds, but it changes like with the phases of the moon or something, that the, the layout of the house and the grounds shift with the moon. And so I've been keeping track of that. And so it's information that I have been kind of stewarded to pass on and, and to check every cycle to make sure that things aren't moving. and Or probably to check which things have moved. Yeah. <laughs> I think for uh, they saved your life and you understand that you owe them for it, I think it might be interesting if that was EK, if you're good with that. Hell yeah. Okay, AJ, what's uh, EK's first one? And I think what I might do is I'll do two rounds um, and then leave it optional whether you take a history with the third other hunter um, because I feel like this group might be a little disconnected at this point, so it might make sense that the interconnections aren't so tight. I think this can go back to Onyx of uh, that this hunter is tied into my destiny somehow. Okay, Sophie, uh, Chloe's first choice. No one's tempted by that you already found one of the secret rooms. <laughs> yes, I am tempted by that. So <laughs> let me look at the the map to see what uh, room I would like to discover. Well, anybody else uh, very interested in, in libraries? It's right there next to the regular living room, so it seems to make sense. Uh, it could be anyway, though. You could have discovered one of the more deeply hidden rooms if you feel like it. Oh, yeah, they don't have to be directly connected? It does not. Not this time. The others would. When you, when you discover them normally, you've kind of got to follow the paths, but this one's uh, an exception. And the divine is an angel? It's a celestial. Um, oh. Not sure what type. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, we don't know at this stage. So Gosh. then maybe their shrine would be really exciting to have discovered. Yeah. And that would make sense that it'd be on the grounds, but that we don't necessarily see at this point the connection between it and the house so you and onyx discovered the shrine yes and let's see the rest of the question was pick one of the secret rooms and decide what happened to the two of you there mark that room you remember where it is and you can explore the corridors from there as well as from the starting rooms one of you marks a lock point as spent so i think what could what can like link you to there was that there was one time that Onyx went to the house, stumbled onto the shrine, and like it almost triggers a memory, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. That's what I was thinking as well. It doesn't like come to pass, and Onyx ends up being knocked out. And while Chloe's trying to figure out the map, Chloe stumbles upon Onyx just knocked out in the shrine. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, what does the shrine look like? It's actually uh, in the cliff. You you can go down a, a zigzag path that lets you uh, you know view the the ocean, and there's a little 
cave in the cliff. Uh, the shrine is a peaceful place that's always calming to visit. Between mysteries, one hunter can meditate there, and during the next mystery, they can set one of their dice to a result of nine instead of rolling, and then apply other modifiers normally. Ooh. Cool. Uh, okay, uh, Rev, do you want to do a second history of choice? I was thinking about kind of swerving here. You know, the idea that Onyx lives in the house and that I have seen them before. And I'm thinking of Liam as just one of those northeastern people who goes around and, like, watches after a dozen different houses during the winter when people go south. Yep. And so he just makes friends with everyone. So I like the idea of just just good friends. Just we chat. I've known you for a while. Um, and that it's been as, as long as you've lived here, maybe even... When you were having a rough patch, I mentioned that this place sits empty and that no one lives there. And oh yeah, there's a door in the back's unlocked all the time. No one ever sleeps there. If you you know if you find anybody who needs a place to rest or something like that. Okay, Onyx next next option. Um, I was going in the same vein for mine <laughs> uh, with Liam. Um, they're the person you go for to advice on mortal stuff. Um, oh yeah, that's great. I think. Uh, Onyx's memories were taken away and none were put in their place. So um, they're very confused by a lot of things and have been for the entirety of the time that they've been on Earth. I do think that they lost their memories like decades ago, but they're still not good at learning (laughs) stuff from time to time. Okay, EK, next one. I think since I'm also connected with Chloe, I think... This hunter sees my human side. I think part of Chloe's punishment, quote unquote, uh, was to look after me. (laughs) Uh, And so I have been crashing at her place, just watching all the reality TV shows on Mm -hmm. Netflix and Hulu Mm -hmm. and all the streaming services. Sophie, what is Chloe's second I think they're described in prophecies, but the role they will play isn't stated, right? The prophecies being unclear could be that the prophecies talk about EK, but what EK's done is different. It would explain why I've I've been uh, tasked with keeping an eye on the... Okay, so that's everyone's got two. Optionally, if you want to do a history option with the one remaining hunter, go for it. I think that... EK introduced me to the existence of monsters just because they were on television. Like, I don't think oh, of yeah. that as a, I actually have yeah. a connection to the hunter other than that. But you remember that show. Like half of that yeah. history. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the things I want to do before we actually get started playing is talk about uh, safety tools and some lines. Um, I'm highlighting this in particular because one of the things we're putting in the Codex of Mysteries is a discussion of exactly this concept. First thing I'll throw in that we can um, do an X card style. If anything comes up that you are uncomfortable with, just let me know and we'll rewind and and do something different. And also talk about a few kind of hard lines to not cross. Um, So I've noted down like what is kind of off limits for me, which is sexual violence, graphic torture, or any kind of cruelty to animals and children. Although perhaps animals or children might be in danger, but like not in a really cruel way. So if anyone's got any other lines that for not to cross, please let me know. That definitely covers mine uh, well. Also in general, I would add no gratuitous use of isms and, you know, slurs and so forth, unless it's di- directly the issue being addressed and uh, justice will prevail. Yeah, I don't imagine it coming up, but the one we've kind of set as a house rule, which has always worked nicely, is that slavers or Nazis or whatever are not redeemable characters. Yep, I'm happy with that too. Um, not, like, there could be gore, but not, like, excessive gore. Okay, I'm all good with that. And remember, if anything comes up, you're not not sure, let me know, say X, or say, please, let's take that back and do something else. And I think we'll all be happy to figure something out. Alright, I think we've got everything we need to get started. We're in Maine, in the present day, which we I've just discovered is absolutely horrible. It is freezing, raining, snowing, ice, nasty. <laughs> Chloe and EK approaching. What's your transport? Are you like in an Uber or has the sect given you a nice 
big black SUV or are you in some, you know, cheap rental? What do you think, Chloe? I think you're a rental. So it's struggling through this horrible snowy roads, Mm -hmm. um, heading out of town, like you kind of land at the airport, leave that, go through a smaller town and then out towards the coast, climbing up into some like rocky hilly areas. Um, I imagine it's kind of a bit surrounded by some some kind of woodland and things and a few farms and um, people's holiday houses and that sort of thing. Kind of feels like you're slowly getting further and away, away from any kind of civilization. And then you kind of reach uh, a rise and look down and you can see this kind of massive sprawling gardens covered in snow at this time of year. And this like weird rambling house at the edge of the sea looking out across the Atlantic. And there's like a core of the house that looks like a big fancy like hotel or something or hospital maybe from from 150 years ago maybe. And then other bits and pieces and buildings associated with it that are of all kinds of style. Some older, some more newer. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, impressively large, but um, kind of a little bit unnerving the way it's 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 so messy and, and disorganized. Um, so as you two drive your compact rental car down the driveway towards the house, can you describe what Chloe looks like driving the car and then um, what EK looks like in the passenger seat? Chloe uh, always wears a business suit. So, uh, and her cover, of course, is being an insurance adjuster. It's, it's less jarring nowadays, but it's still a, a contrast uh, peeking from under. You can, uh, you can see she has elaborate tattoos and everywhere th- that they can peek, they do. And I think with a, a cool of minus one, she's not great at driving under uh, challenging conditions. She wasn't raised with snow. So uh, her driving is a, a little brisk. EK is just fully reclined in the chair, uh, has his feet up on the dashboard, and his feet are kind of like those, like the like the three-toed feet, like that is like talons more. But like in between those talons is like it's like a destroyed Converse shoe, <laughs> but his his toe his talons are just sticking through the shoe. Yeah, he's wearing long pants and like this like uniglo puffer jacket but has like two extra holes at the bottom for his uh smaller arms so you just cut some holes in the side yeah just cut some holes in the side which is is like kind of counteractive for a warm coat to cut holes into your coat but you gotta do what you gotta do when you're a forearm demon uh, <laughs> yeah and fully passed out uh you just hear the clunking of his sledgehammer and axe in the trunk okay so as you approach the house um is it liam or onyx who comes out to meet this car driving up to with the new owners or the 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 new custodians probably liam i think it's liam yeah (laughs) yeah okay so as you drive up uh you can see like there's an old sign um like really old looks like it was maybe from like the 1960s when it was a motel which it, and that's kind of falling off and behind that you can see the sign from like the 1900s when it was like the uh the golden elysium health retreat um so like the the front side's kind of hanging off just so you can see hints of that behind it um both of them look horrible they're just falling to pieces and uh, Liam, what do you look like as the car drives up on the driveway? Yeah, Liam is in his late 60s. Uh, he is in a chambray work shirt, a flannel vest over it, and a pair of old jeans. And he has got a rifle slung over his shoulder, and he is just hacking with a fire axe at something on the ground um, and we pan down and we can see that it's this huge knotted vine that as he kind of cuts through it it stops moving and and he pulls it off of the road uh, to make way for the car and he kind of peers up uh, he's got white hair and starting to to go bald on top and he waves at the car okay uh so you you pull up at the, the grand entrance and it's like huge columns like big wide doors but all pretty run down. I mean, it's, it's been maintained enough to kind of still be livable, 
but not really any more than that. And as I say, mixture of styles. So there are like pieces that don't look like they fit in the house, um, even if the core of it like feels like this big fancy spa from 150 years ago. Coming out of one of the side doors of the house in a very disheveled and panicked nature, slamming the door behind them, you see a maybe five foot ten black sort of going between masculine and feminine figure um, with goddess braids down to the waist and in shorts and in a tank top very obviously not prepared for this weather at all whatsoever as they open the door you hear a bunch of shouting coming from the other side and they close it and then all the shouting is just gone onyx uses uh their move angel wings through doors uh so they just go through a door and end up somewhere else wherever they want to be and it seems like wherever they just came from, they were in a lot of trouble. Uh, and they sort of <laughs> are panic breathing and not fully noticing the rest of uh, the group that has shown up yet. This is the first time that I'm seeing it. And EK just like gets out of the rental cars like, man, this is a piece of crap. Why are we here? Now, when you get out of this compact rental car, is this like... I'm imagining quite a huge creature unfolding itself out of the side door oh, here. <laughs> very much. Yeah. I think Chloe has had to been here before since mm. uh, they discovered the shrine. So maybe the past mission that went south was here to acquire the house or reclaim the house. Yeah, that makes sense. So I look at it with foreboding. We pan to see that, that, that vista. But when uh, my gaze lands on uh, Liam and Onyx, I feel a little uh, reassured by their presence. Liam walks over to Chloe and, uh, The thing I noticed this morning when I was going around the grounds is uh, uh, most of the trees seem to have moved. It's not major, but I marked it down here on this map. The Weeping Willow is not quite where it was, and its uh, vines are getting a bit aggressive. i hand her the map. Aside from the growing vines... Did you notice any changes in the type of vegetation? Are they the same types of trees? No, it's the same type of tree. It, I'd say probably give it uh, maybe two, three more days before we see any real change in the vegetation. Thank you, Liam. Well, Have you been well all alone here? Well, all alone as uh, one can be with someone coming in and out of doors without really opening them. Liam, have you set up rooms for everyone? I think I probably would have, yeah. I don't know that I set up enough rooms. I don't know <laughs> if I'm aware that EK was coming. Right. Um, so there's yeah, at least yeah. a, a room for Chloe. Uh, and where does Liam live? Like, do you have a room in the house or like a, a little cottage on the grounds? Or Yeah, I think there's a cottage on the grounds. Um, oh, well, Liam, you see you've got an extra guest. <laughs> Liam stands there and runs his hands through his, his thinning hair and looks at EK. Oh, I've seen you before on the television. Oh, you saw... You definitely probably saw me on Milana's talk show. Yeah, yeah, you're here to destroy the world, but it seemed like a lot of trouble. Now you're thinking about doing what? Becoming one of them YouTube stars or something. You know, I could become a stream that is a very valid thing that i could become i could become a streamer oh i haven't thought about that well i suppose you'll be sleeping here as well seeing as you came with chloe let me uh fix up a third room turn and start to walk towards the door uh sophie chloe's room what's it like when you get there liam set it up for you so it's ready to go but what kind of room would you pick uh, liam I think it would be one of the ones from the 1940s uh, with like a canopy bed and like something that I think that she would like. Oh, this is a young woman. She'll enjoy this. But it's not at all what she would like. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think then there must be some... Uh, Paintings or reproductions of paintings that are all dark or faded, depending on where they were in the sun, and dusty, uh, and just look sinister nowadays. One of those big old 1930s radios that's like mm. a meter tall oh, yes. in the corner. <laughs> I tried to travel light, but I have a, a side bag and... and a suitcase. The suitcase is very heavy because it's the one that's full of documents uh, and, you know, crammed with the socks and underwear. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, uh, fortunately, a 40s era room will have a nice writing desk for you to put your documents in. Excellent. So I start arranging them methodically. Okay, EK, what room do you think you get assigned unexpectedly? Probably one of the more modern rooms, but just it's very bare. It's very bare yep. bones. It's like it was probably going to be a certain room, but they never got to it. Oh, yeah. It's like someone was going to renovate it and they stripped it and then yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, Onyx, um, let's cut to you um, as you've recovered from your panicked escape from whatever that was. <laughs> um, and you can take a moment. I, I want to know what your room in the house is like. Yeah, I think Onyx's room um, is... First of all, it has a very large, very nicely um, put together like bed and bedspread and like everything uh, around the bed aesthetically connects to it and it like sort of ties the room together. However, it's never been slept in. Um, Onyx doesn't really understand sleep and thinks that it's boring. Um, So she just doesn't. Is this like a... You looked at lots of things on Instagram to get an idea for what it should yes, be like. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks it looks like the perfect like bedroom. It like everything is like perfectly tied together. Um, something else of note is Onyx has a bunch of like um, Polaroid pictures hung up around the room of them with what they assume are just random people, but are actually like really famous celebrities. <laughs> um, <laughs> that uh he just doesn't know who they are they just seemed cool um so uh he has all of those uh and um has like a shelf of books uh all concerning uh celestials and the divine and whatever but it seems like it hasn't been touched in a a long time could you name two of the celebrities who you randomly met and took a selfie with oh yes absolutely (laughs) um lizzo is definitely like one of them um, yep. The other one is. Uh, I was gonna say either Dave Bautista or Andrew Garfield. <laughs> it's Andrew Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Garfield. Yes. Cool. <laughs> After everyone's had a time to settle in, and I, I realize actually uh, I haven't asked what Liam's cottage is like, but I kind of have um, in my mind New England late middle age groundskeeper, and I think I know exactly what the cottage yeah. is like. So yeah, is, yeah. is it like that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> cool. <laughs> there's no there's no mysteries here. <laughs> I think for the first several days, uh, Chloe will be trying different methods of opening with uh, with a meeting, like the morning meeting. Yep. So uh, she will try like ringing the bell that uh, that you called the the staff with. Uh, she will try, try calling by voice, you know, try, come on, everyone. She will try a, a few different things until it settles. And, uh, that probably makes it more unsettled for, for the time being. Uh, she's not, she's not goofy, but this, she's uh, walking on eggshells right now. And, uh, she, uh, she will also try to have the, you know, let's make it a breakfast meeting. Does Liam cook for the house? No, I I think any cooking that he does is on like a a hot plate. <laughs> so the first day, of course, she wants breakfast and there's nothing. <laughs> so and I guess the kitchen in the house would not have been used for a while. Yeah, especially since Onyx doesn't need it. It seems sure doesn't. Onyx uh doesn't eat because when he did eat, it was like sort of it would just keep eating without stopping and it just became a problem (laughs) (laughs) definitely ek alongside with the sledgehammer and the axe that were in the trunk the only bag he had was just a duffel bag and it was filled with hot pockets um (laughs) so he definitely stole the microwave that was in the kitchen so there's just a square there's like a like you know how like when something is like really dusty and you clearly mm-hmm. know when something has been moved yeah there's just a clean <laughs> rectangle randomly in the kitchen because ek took the took the microwave and put it in their room so there was a microwave so it must have been an old one right oh, oh those was massive old. heavy it, things mm, and probably really dangerous yeah mm-hmm 
and probably EK is mostly the reason why these morning meetings do not work. <laughs> <laughs> I know all of you, but I think you don't necessarily all know each other. So I think we should introduce ourselves. I am uh, Chloe Vasilides. I've been with Eternium for a while now. And uh, in fact, as uh, Liam and Onyx know, I was here before during the acquisition period. Uh, everybody, I would like you to meet our new teammate, EK. And e- is EK still there or did he wander off? Uh, no, EK, EK is there. EK is there for once. And he, he, they are chow they're just biting into a hot pocket they did not wait okay. the suggested two minutes uh, <laughs> that you need to wait after you've cooked a hot pocket is that because you can handle the the intense heat or you just it's just, just part of the experiment? they just like it like that <laughs> they like how it burns mm-hmm. i'm ek uh famously known as the demon that was good to take over the world but didn't i am working on rebranding because lovely lovely uh liam brought it up uh i think i'm gonna become a streamer so what do you think of like the stream being called like demon hours and my followers called the occult like yeah i think it's a very good brand it's very on brand i think it's gonna work great does the golden elysium have an internet connection because I'm thinking probably it doesn't, and probably the the mobile coverage is not great here either. Like I think there is a there is a room that has an Ethernet port, but it's never where you expect it, and it's never in the same room. <laughs> I think the house definitely has like an old landline, and when I say mm. old, like you know, 1970s telephone connection kind of thing. Mm. <laughs> My name's Onyx. Um, you can just call me Onyx. There's not really anything else besides that. Um, I've been in and out of here, what, Liam, uh, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, something, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it It's a nice place. Y'all should uh, enjoy it, I think. EK is, like, doing the whole leaning back on a chair and, like, balancing on the two uh, two back legs. And it was like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Onyx, I, I know you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, there, there, there was that time that uh, you were you were getting chased out, chased out that town because mm-hmm. they thought you were mm-hmm. but a spawn of what god did they say? I think Onyx says something. It's one, not in English; two, not in any recognizable tongue ever. Um, but Onyx just says it like reactively and doesn't uh, say anything else of it. <laughs> yep yep that sounds that sounds just about right I, I i get that a lot you know and uh maybe they're right maybe they're wrong uh can't really blame him honestly liam stands like he's at a formal meeting uh name's liam i'm the caretaker here i've been here for uh, going on uh 40 some years don't know how much longer i'll do it but for some reason i wake up i keep thinking i should come here so here we are sits back down Liam has been mapping the place, and if you don't know already, it's got a very interesting layout that keeps shifting, apparently, with the phases of the moon. So it's very variable. So maybe we can uh, work with Liam's map to try to establish what else uh, is here on the ground. Okay, so Liam, do you want to get the map out and put it on the table here in the kitchen? Yeah. Actually, this works quite well, because what you notice is on the map, there's a bunch of black spots that weren't there before, just around the grounds. Is there anybody spilled anything on this? <laughs> Didn't look like a paint by numbers. I know I did that last time. I'm sorry. I think, like, EK will, like, glance at the map, like, look away, get interested once, once, uh, once Leah, once it was mentioned, is like, oh, the room's changed with every phase of the moon. Because definitely EK has been debriefed on why they are here uh just didn't listen uh (laughs) before they left okay when you (laughs) glance away you see um another person walk down the hallway um but kind of unusually for a human they're a bit translucent and totally silent uh we're you're only expecting us right i i wasn't even expecting you but yeah it shouldn't be any more than just the four of us 
Cool. Cool. There's someone else here. What do you mean? I just saw there was someone over there. Whip around to look. Uh, you just catch a glimpse of a ghostly figure stepping through the closed door at the end of that hallway. The Codex of Worlds is a 400 plus page hardcover expansion for Monster of the Week, featuring 13 new team playbooks to help your party work together plus five new settings to take your supernatural monster hunting adventures to entirely new worlds and time periods. The crowdfunding campaign is live now on Backerkit, and to learn more, you can go to evilhat.com.